ça. Thank you. I'm really not the entertainment tonight. I'm here to enjoy it myself. So I really appreciate you being here at Town Hall tonight. I think it'll be very enjoyable. We have Jonathan Gruber here to speak. Uh, Jonathan's a award-winning MIT health economist and director of the health care program of the National Bureau of Economic Research, one of the longest titles and one I'd hate to have myself. He was a key architect. One of the things I ran into him, or at least heard of him a lot, when he was working up in Massachusetts, helping the Massachusetts people put together their reform. He's also worked with the administration and Congress when they developed the health care reform legislation that was uh, passed about two years ago. He's also co-editor of the Journal of Public Economics and associate editor of the Journal of Health Economics. He's published more than 125 articles, uh, has edited six uh, research volumes. He's author of Public Finance and Public Policy, and, uh, which is a leading undergraduate text. Phew. Which is why he probably speaks with great authority about the, uh, the law. And what he has done is written a book called Health Care Reform, What It Is, why it's necessary and how it works. I think it is a very, it's a fast, but also a very informative read. So please give a warm town hall welcome to Jonathan Gruber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thanks, Bob, for the kind introduction. Um, I have about 10 minutes to start, and there's a lot to talk about with health care reform. So I'm going to start with a little story. Uh, my si my, my uh, younger sister, Joelle, now lives here in Seattle, and this story involves her. The story is that one time she came running to the house and found my father and said, Dad, Dad, where's Mom? I need to talk to her. And my father said, I don't know where she is. Can I help you? And she said no and started to walk away. And my father said, well, what do you need help with? And she said, I need help with my math homework. Now, my father's a PhD in finance, so he was a bit taken aback that she didn't want help with her math homework from him. And he said, why, don't, why can't I help you? And she said, I don't want to know that much about it. <laughs> so uh, in that spirit, I'm going to try not to tell you more than you want to know here in the opening few minutes, and rather let what you want to know come out of my conversation with Bob and in your questions, which I'm really eager to hear. Um, I want to just start by setting a little bit of background, which is to really understand the importance of, of where we are historically and in terms of the numbers. Historically, we've been trying as a nation to do fundamental health care reform for about 100 years. About on average, every 17 years, we've tried to do health care reform. Um, and we've always failed till 2010. Uh, and as we failed, the problems have gotten worse. The number of uninsured in America have continued to grow, now reaching 50 million individuals. And the cost of health care continued to grow. Uh, we got good news today that health care spending rose more slowly last year. But more slowly still means faster than the economy. We're still increasing health care to about 18% of our gross domestic product. If nothing's done, by 2080, we'll spend four in every $10 on health care. By about 100 years after that, we'll spend 100% of our economy on health care. Now, that may be good for the doctors in the crowd, but it's not really good for the rest of us. And it's not really feasible. So we've got these twin crises. In my book, I represent them as a two-headed alligator that we're trying to, trying to deal with. And yet, we've been unable to decide to deal with them. And the real breakthrough here, and whether or not he likes it, the hero of our story is Mitt Romney. And the real breakthrough came with Governor Mitt Romney in Massachusetts in 2006 when he signed into law Massachusetts health care reform, which took a new approach that hadn't been tried before, an approach I like to call incremental universalism. Incremental, borrow from the right, meaning leave people alone if they like what they have, but help people who don't, for whom the system doesn't work. Universal, borrowed from the left, meaning let's get to universal coverage. This had not been tried before. This was not a scorched earth, rip it up and start over approach. This was a let's recognize politically that we can't take away things people like, but that we can get to where we need to be in terms of universal coverage. He set up a system which I like to think of as a three-legged stool. The first leg was to end discrimination in insurance markets, to end a flawed system we have in America 
where people are just one bad gene or one bad traffic accident away from bankruptcy. The second step was to set up an individual mandate so that insurance companies could price insurance fairly, selling into this newly reformed market. And the third step was subsidies so that health insurance could be affordable for individuals under this individual mandate. This system was put in place in 2006 in Massachusetts and has been enormously successful. We've covered about two-thirds of the uninsured in the state, and we've lowered the cost of health insurance in our non-employer market by about 50%. And this was the basis for the Federal Affordable Care Act, which after much toing and froing that maybe we'll get into tonight, uh, passed in uh, March 2010. The same basic structure is in the Affordable Care Act, but the Affordable Care Act is more ambitious in two fundamental ways. The first is, and candidate Romney may not tell you this, but his bill was paid for by the federal government. So when we did reform in Massachusetts, we didn't have to raise taxes, as he will tell you. What he won't tell you is we didn't have to raise taxes because the federal government paid for it. The federal government doesn't have that luxury. It's not like China's gonna pay for our health care reform. Okay, we didn't have that luxury of someone else paying for it, so we had to raise revenues. That was one place we had to be more ambitious, and we can talk about those revenues and where they came from. The second is the bill in Massachusetts was not really about the second head of my two-headed alligator. It was not about cost control. It was not, a, and not about dealing with this probably more important problem, honestly, in the long run, which is controlling healthcare costs. And I'm here to tell you that's okay. That's okay because that's a lot harder problem. Ultimately a more important problem, but a lot harder problem. But a problem that we're moving forward towards solving, we're just not there yet. And that situation, what you do is you try to move forward, and the Affordable Care Act moves forward in a number of different ways to try to control healthcare costs none of which by themselves will work, and altogether will not really be the last word on cost control, but which move us forward towards ultimately controlling healthcare costs and not ending up spending 40 or 100% of our GDP on healthcare. And that's the two sets in which that bill was more ambitious. What my book does is really go through that background, go through what happened in Massachusetts, and then go through the details of the Affordable Care Act. And I hope tonight we'll get to talk about those details and answer any questions you have. But that's sort of just an overview I want to provide, and now I'd love to uh, talk, with, uh, talk with Bob and uh, hear his questions, then hear your questions. So thank you. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, I think this is a, uh, it's an interesting topic you brought up. We, obviously, a lot of us here care a lot about what our healthcare system looks like, feels like. You mentioned one thing right in the beginning, though, had to do with incrementalism versus a broader sweep. Could you speak a little more about why incremental this time? Why not a broader sweep? How can we meet our goals if we don't? You know, I think the, the historical pattern is interesting in that every round healthcare reform, the, the proposed approach is moved to the right. Mm -hmm. Every round we've moved from a single payer proposed to a somewhat less single payer to the Clinton system, which had these regional cooperatives, but still would have really fundamentally reconfigured the healthcare system. I think what was realized in this round was there's two fundamental problems with trying to completely reconfigure the healthcare system. The first is most Americans are pretty happy with what they have. They get their insurance from a large employer. They wish it was cheaper, but they have a variety of choices. Their employer picks up most of the cost, so they don't really realize the cost, and they're pretty happy. In American politics, you don't get very far by ripping up what makes 200 million people happy to make 50 million other people happy. The second is to recognize that we have an $800 billion private health insurance industry in America, and it's not going away. I mean, look, look at, we bailed out industries much smaller than that. Uh, we're not gonna wipe out an $800 billion private insurance industry. We had to bring them along to make this feasible. I think the those two recognitions led to this approach. It led to a realization by many who had a dream of a single-payer system that, that just wasn't happening in the near term, and we needed to move towards a system which was politically feasible, but which could get us to the fundamental goal of universal health care coverage. That's very good. Uh, I, I know a lot of us care a lot about continuing that. The, uh, one of the issues that you brought up, which is really important, you mentioned the two-headed dragon. You said there was a, a two-headed alligator. You mentioned uh, that the, we were working on the uh, access issues, but really there's also the cost control. You mentioned that in, in Massachusetts, you didn't bite on that bullet, but you, we did in the, the national. How did we, how much is, is it gonna be successful? What has to be done to make that successful? You know, Bob, 
healthcare cost control is really hard. I like to think of it, I didn't put it in the book, no, I sort of wish I did. I like to think of it as having to go over two hills to get to where we need to go to. The first hill